So which of the following items is a capital asset under code section 1221? Because remember, the reason why we're, do we're doing this is we're trying to determine capital gains, capital losses. The general rule under section 1221, 1222 is you need a sale or exchange of a capital asset. We're focusing on the capital asset portion of that formula. Okay? So we're going to go through each of these, A through K, and we're going to determine if it's a capital asset using our 1221 right items, and we focus on six. If you have some other instructor, they might have all nine or 11 or however many there are. You know, There's even more in the case law, but I focus on six. Right? Remember that all assets are capital assets unless they are, number one, inventory, or number two, trade or business personal property that's depreciable or amortizable, or number three, any trade or business real property, or number four, self-created intangibles. Specifically, the intangibles have to be copyrights, patents, trade secrets, formulas, inventions, things similar to copyrights like books, artistic works, poems, or number five, accounts or notes receivable, or number six, supplies. Those are the six that I focus on. So let's go through this list, A through K, I'm going to put a check mark if it's a capital asset, and we're going to explain why. I'll put an X if it's not a capital asset. So A, a car used solely for personal purposes. Is that a capital asset? Yes. Why? Again, all assets are capital assets unless they're one of those six items. It's not inventory. It's not business property, so it's not number two or number three. It's not intangible, so it's not number four, right? The self-created intangibles. It's not accounts receivable or notes receivable, and it's not supplies. So A, car used solely for personal purposes, is going to be a capital asset. Now remember, I've mentioned that what you see from the list of six is that pretty much all personal use property, right? Any property used for personal purposes, personal use property is a capital asset. Obviously, exceptions could be patents or copyrights or artistic or inventions, right? That are self-created or gifted, right? But almost all personal use assets are capital assets. So keep that in mind. Okay, B. A cabin cruiser boat held for sale by a boat dealer. Is that a capital asset? No. Why not? In, held for sale, exactly. So it's inventory, right? Number one on our list of things that are not capital assets is, are inventory or is inventory. So the idea here is you might personally hold a boat and that might be a capital asset or you can hold a boat as an investment. But to a, a boat dealer, right, that's holding it for resale, it's considered inventory and therefore it's inventory. So the point I focus on here in B is that you got to be careful. There's no one sole classification for any kind of asset. You got to look at how it's held by the, by the taxpayer. That's very important. Let's move on. Okay, C, a private residence. So personal use private residence. What is that going to be? Capital asset. For the same reason in A, right? You go through the six items, doesn't mean it. And again, almost all personal use property is considered a capital asset. Okay, D, shares of stock owned by a taxpayer. Almost surely, this is going to be a capital asset. If you go through our list of six items, inventory, business uh, personal property, that's depreciable or amortizable, business real property, intangibles, obviously stock's on, well, stock is technically an intangible, right, because ownership in a corporation, but it's not copyright or patent or trade secret or formula. It's not accounts receivable, notes receivable. Generally speaking, in tax classes, stock owned by the, by the owner, the shareholder, is considered a capital asset. Now, there is kind of a continuum, right? When you think about stock, on one side, you can have brokers or dealers and securities. On the other side, you can have investors. Maybe in the middle, you can have day traders in terms of how they hold stock. Pretty much the tax law said that if you're a broker or dealer in securities like Goldman Sachs, right? You, you buy a bunch of shares of stock for an investment fund. If you're a broker or dealer, then it's considered inventory. So if you're a uh, if it's inventory, as you know, it's considered not a capital asset. Day traders and investors, the, the law is pretty much said that day traders and investors, it's going to be a capital asset stock. So here, almost surely, it's going to be a capital asset. Okay, E, 
a musical score written for a popular singer and donated to him by the composer. So this gets to our number four in our list of six, uh, what's not a capital asset, right? The items, self-created, copyrights, trade secrets, patents, formulas, artistic, literary, poems. That gets to that item. And remember, if it's gifted, so here it was donated to him by the composer, that gets at that item. So a musical score written for popular singer and donated to him, generally speaking, that's going to be not a capital asset under that list. Now, I will say there is a special rule for certain types of songs. Um, the uh, country, country music lobby, I think, had a, had a toll on that um, several years ago. So there are, some, there are some special rules there, but I'm just going to stick to the general rule. This is not considered a um, capital asset. Sorry, I put a check mark there. Not a capital asset. My apologies. Okay, because it was held, the person that donated was the composer themselves. Okay, F, a factory owned by a shoe manufacturer. That's going to be a business piece of real property, right? Used in business, therefore not a capital asset, number three on our list. G, a fleet of trucks used for delivery by that same shoe manufacturer. That's going to be personal property, subject to depreciation used in business, right? So that is also not a capital asset, number two on our list. H, a string of pearls received as a birthday gift. What is that going to be? Capital asset. Again, going back to A and C, almost all personal use property is considered a capital asset. I, a credit account in which a customer owes a butcher $100 for meats bought at the store. Consider the asset held by the butcher. What is that? That's accounts receivable or notes receivable, and therefore accounts and notes receivable, number five on our list, are not a capital asset. J, automatic needle threader patented and held by the inventor. Now, we're only considering the actual patent, not the actual device itself, the actual threader. What is that? That's a self-created patent, and therefore, that is not a capital asset, right? Because it's held by the inventor, the creator. So that is not a capital asset. K, same as J, except now an investor purchased it from the inventor. What is that? Well, we're an investor, and we're not the self-creator. Therefore, it's going to be a capital asset. Now, one thing I want to know is if I told you that this was used in business in K, right? if it was a, a business patent purchased from the inventor, and then it was used in business and amortized, now you're talking about number two, number two on our list, right? Personal property, subject to depreciation, amortization, used in business. And guess what? Now it's considered not a capital asset. So again, it all depends on how you hold it, what your activity is. So it makes a big difference. So again, the reason why we have to go through and determine what's a capital asset and what's not is under the general rules of section 1221, 1222, to have a capital gain, capital loss, you need to have a sale or exchange of a capital asset. So we're going to continue on to some other problems that focus on the sale or exchange and the capital asset aspects even more.